Hi everyone, um, welcome back to my channel. Today I've got my January favorites. They're a little bit on the um, later side, but I thought better late than never. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing I have to say is like my number one January favorite would be my new house. <laughs> um, we moved in the week of New Year's, so I've been in my house for a little over a full month and it's just absolutely incredible. I love it. Having my own space is something I think I've been needing for a really long time. Um, and I just, I just love housekeeping and I love cooking my own dinners and going grocery shopping every week. It's just, it's feels very grown up and it's just, it's incredibly fun. Um, also a huge responsibility, but it's totally worth it. Um, so I think I only have a few uh, makeup favorites to get into t this month. Um, so I think I'm just going to start with those. The first thing I've been absolutely loving is the Maybelline Full and Soft Mascara. Um, this is just in the shade Very Black. Um, I just really like it. It leaves my eyelashes feeling still like touchable and not crunchy. Um, I have had this one for quite a while so I'm going to probably have to get rid of it soon. Um, and then I don't know if I'm going to repurchase. I have really enjoyed using this mascara but um, I think it might be time to branch out into something new. Um, the next thing I've been really liking is the NYX HD concealer. I have mine in the shade Porcelain. Yeah, CW01 Porcelain. I love this. I have been plagued with trying to find a concealer for so long and I swear I bought the um, oh God, the Naked Skin Concealer and it was too yellow. I bought a Maybelline concealer and it was the Fit Me and it was too yellow. So I think I was just in this horrible rut where every time I would go to try to find a concealer they didn't have my shade so I thought that the, late, the next lightest would be perfect but like I also got a Bare Minerals Bare Skin I think it's called um that was again too yellow this one NYX HD in porcelain is like perfect I can wear this on no makeup day to conceal my horrendous <laughs> dark circles and it just looks Flawless, and then I just use um, the Rimmel Stay Matte Translucent Powder, and I just um, set it, and I'm good to go. I also use this for concealing blemishes. I just use a little, um, put a little on the back of my hand, use a little brush, and um, just spot conceal. It's really pretty versatile. I like how it blends. It blends quite nicely under the eyes, and it doesn't look cakey, or it doesn't look like it sits weird on me at least. Um, I really, really like it. Um, I'll probably be repurchasing it because it was quite inexpensive, but I have a ways to go yet because it's not even like halfway. I'm going to have this forever. Um, another favorite of mine um, this month has been the L'Oreal Infallible Super Slim Liquid Eyeliner in the shade just black. Um, it's really good. It's got this teeny tiny little um, thin long point to it and it doesn't dry out like I've had some felt tip liners where you draw the line and then you have to recap it shake it up because it dries out so quickly this is perfect and the tip is so thin that I've been starting to really test my um wing liner abilities as you can see um I just draw two very precise equal looking lines and then I just connect it to the to the lid and it looks really good I went for a little bit of a, a thicker more bold wing today um, and I really like the way it, it turned out. I think this is a really good if you're starting out with wing liner and you're not sure if you've got a steady enough hand. This is really nice because it's thin, it's precise, and I think it's pretty foolproof. Um, so that one's good. And then my only flop, well not my only flop, my only makeup flop, this is the last makeup item, it's um the Essie nail polish in Sheerling Darling. 
Now, I buy most of my nail polishes at Job Lot. It still has a sticker on it because they're so cheap. As opposed to $8.99, I got this for 3 bucks. That's not the reason why I don't like this. Those nail polishes are usually a little bit older, um, but I've bought a ton of Essie nail polishes from Job Lot and none of them have done what this one does. I should have known by the name, Shearling. It is really sheer. I did one coat, I let it dry. I let it dry so long that it was probably like two or three hours before I applied the second coat because it was just patchy as all heck. Um, so I put a second coat. And as I'm painting my nails, I've noticed that the second layer is pulling up the first layer and making it even patchier. It was horrible. I've never experienced that with nail polish in my entire life. So this is a absolute flop for me. I don't even know if they still sell this color, but stay away from it because it's horrendous. I thought it was going to be like this really, really pretty berry color. It's not opaque enough for me to be wearable. Um, I managed it. I did leave it on for about a week. Um, but it was just, it was horrendous. I hated this. This was the worst Essie nail polish I think I've ever tried in my entire life. And I have quite a few Essie nail polishes. Um, Alright, two food favorites. Um, I don't have either one to show you because it's been so long. I've been eating these. Well, I finished um, the one in the beginning of January. It was just really, really good. Um, they're the Ritz chips. And they come in a little bag. And I got the original cheddar and salt and vinegar. The original was really good. It was actually surprisingly <clears throat> delicious. It was... It tasted just like a Ritz cracker, like a regular Ritz cracker, but it wasn't um, the same kind of texture. It was more of a, like puffed. Um, it was good. It was excellent with dip, and I really enjoyed it. The cheddar was okay. It was about the same as the original, but it had like that artificial cheese powder on it, so it wasn't necessarily my favorite. And then the salt and vinegar was mm, was good. But I didn't finish the bag. It was a strange salt and vinegar flavor. And they were more like chips because of the vinegar and the oil kind of made it made it more crispy, like a chip. Um, but again, oddly enough, was not my favorite. I really, really prefer the original. Um, if you haven't tried the Ritz chips, oh my god. Definitely get the original and try it out. It was delicious. Um, and the second food favorite... Um, surprisingly enough stop and shop guacamole is so good and it's always $4.99 a pound and you can always um it's usually packaged in a pound container maybe a little bit more um but it's like the best guacamole I've ever had and I have tried making it in the past and I'm just rubbish at it so buying it is like this the best thing for me and I usually eat it over the course of two days, depending on when it was packaged at Stop and Shop. If I'm lucky enough to get it on the day that they package it, I'll eat it over the course of a few days. But if it's been like two days since they packaged it, it's in an airtight container, don't get me wrong. It's perfectly fine as long as you don't open it and close it and open it and close it over and over again. Because you know how avocado can tend to go a little brown and gross. Um, it's actually pretty good so if it's two days since it's been made I usually eat it in, a, in one sitting <laughs> or at least over the course of one day and it I just I can't get over how delicious it is um, okay. so I have done three puzzles um, this month and one of them I've been working on for years because I started it after I came back from Spain because I got it in Spain and I got frustrated, I stopped, and then we had to um, put it away. So then I restarted it very recently before I even moved into this house. It's been on my coffee table for months. And I finally finished it. It is, um, it's a puzzle. I think I got it at the Prado. Is that the Museum of Spain? I can't remember. Um, yep, Muse Museo del Prado. I got this at the Prado Museum of Spain. It's a puzzle version of the Las Meninas paintings, painting by Velazquez, and I love this painting so much, and I just love it. Seeing it in person is, first of all, it's huge. It's massive, and so I really wanted, I didn't want to print, because I thought it was just kind of like 
so average to get a print, so I, I got the puzzle. <laughs> it was probably the worst idea I've ever had in my life because not only, alright, so this is the cover and most puzzles have the full picture of it on the puzzle, but this one is so big that it goes on the side and it's really tough to, to look at this and batch up the pieces. There are so many varying shades of black and brown in this puzzle that it was a nightmare to say the least. And you wouldn't know that two shades didn't quite match up if the puzzle pieces fit nicely until you had a light. I was using my camera light on my phone to get real up close to it and I'd be like, damn it, it's just a little too gray or a little too red um, or a little too black to be like in the spot that I had placed it. Even though the puzzle pieces fit, the, the color was off. So I just finished it this month overjoyed. I'm gonna like, I don't know how to do it, but I'm gonna shellac it and put a frame on it and just be done with it. So I can hang it up somewhere in my house and enjoy looking at it, but never have to do that puzzle again. Oh, that was probably the toughest puzzle I've ever done. And I distinctly remember when I was really, really young doing a Cinderella puzzle and there were pieces missing. So <laughs> it was harder than that. And I was like five when I was doing that. So um, the other two puzzles I did, it was a two-for-one. TJ's had this box for quite a while. Um, Star Wars puzzle. It was really fun. Um, I did this larger one, the smaller version of it, ooh, right there. Um, this one is really tough because it's all foiled um, puzzle pieces. And it was... You'd, you'd look at it and see, okay, this, this piece is blue, but in this different light, it has a metallic foiled pink shift, and you have to figure out where it goes in the puzzle, and the lighting in this room is not that great. So I have another flashlight, and I'm <laughs> like trying to figure out where all the pieces go. Finally, we finished it, um, and I'm leaving that up to TJ if he wants to um, frame it or not, or if he just wants to break it apart, put it back, and then do it again. Um, the other one is this one right here. This one was actually, this one's 300 pieces. They're bigger, so that it's about the same size as the um, Lost Meninas, um paint uh, puzzle that had a thousand pieces, but it's all the faces of the characters from all the films, and it was really fun, but trying to figure out like what pieces matched up with where was a little difficult, and um, you'd find like, oh, it goes here, and once you put it where it's supposed to be and it's with the other pieces, it looks totally different than what it looked like by itself. And I found that to be true with like almost all the pieces. So, I mean, that was fun. Like I said, I'm leaving this one up to TJ if he wants to frame these or do them again. Um, I really do enjoy puzzles. Once we clear up my coffee table, I can start my uh, Little Mermaid one that I got in Disney. I'm super excited about that. And, okay, so last I have um, all the books I've read in the, in the month of January. I'm not going to go into any series detail because it's not a book review. This is a January favorites and flops. Um, and I'm just going to rattle off what I've been reading. So I read the volume two of the Star Wars Jedi Academy. Um, it was okay. This one is by, oh, the name is Dark Apprentice. It was by Kevin Anderson. Um, I will not be purchasing volume one or volume three. It just didn't grab my attention um, well enough. So this was kind of a flop for me. I did enjoy reading it. I do like Star Wars. Um, but this one, eh. Next I have 50 great short stories. I did not read all 50. I picked and chose um, which ones I wanted to read. One by Edgar Allan Poe, one by Virginia Woolf. Um, they were okay. I liked the Virginia Woolf story. I liked the Edgar Allan Poe story. Um, not enough to read all 50 short stories because obviously they're not all by the same author. There are 50 different authors. Um, and I just didn't enjoy it enough. Um, I guess this type of style of writing I'm just not fond of. Um, I also read Kelly Armstrong's Haunted. This is stereotypical, like, supernatural fluff. Um, it was an, a fun read. I did enjoy it. Um, will I keep it? Mm, probably not, because I'm not going to get her other books, because I have a feeling they're just going to be practically exactly the same. Um, I just, I'm not into this style of writing. I do have a few books um, of the similar genre. As I get to them, I might decide to also get rid of those. And that's what happens when you go to 
um, the last day at the book sale in my town. A, book, a bag is two dollars so you fill up as much as you can and by that time um, all the good stuff really has been taken. Hi right, Munchkin! Yeah. Um, another book that I really actually did enjoy, I'll be keeping this, um, it, it reminded me of a movie and I can't remember what movie it was but um, it's called The Prisoner of Birth by Jeffrey Archer and this was it was a little cliche um, it's a guy goes to jail when he doesn't deserve it like he's innocent and the people who actually commit the crime put him there um, and he ends up escaping under the guise of another prisoner who had just died because coincidentally they look the same. They look like they could be brothers. So he takes over his um, persona and ends up trying to clear his name, gets caught because the people who put him in jail the first time are actually pretty smart. Um, but eventually he does clear his name and everything works out. Um, so I'll be keeping that one. It's like the only one of all these I'll be keeping. Um, I also had um, a selection from Reader's Digest. It's four different stories. Crossfire by Dick Francis and Felix Francis. Um, Sweet Misfortune by Kevin Allen Milne. Um, Outwitting Trolls by William Tracy. And Letters from Home by Christina McMorris. My favorite one was Letters from Home. But it was so typical Nicholas Sparks that I just couldn't... Um, I don't know, it just felt so dear John to me that I just, it was okay. And that one was my favorite. So I'm not keeping this um, because I have all the Nicholas Sparks books. I don't need a uh, copycat Nicholas Sparks. Um, so this one will be going back to the library as well. Hopefully I remember that I'm the one that donated this and I won't pick it up again. That's all for books. Um, and then I do have a few, I, I do have um, a TV show to share with you guys. Um, since January I have been into a different TV show, but um, you'll hear all about that in my February favorites. Um, I have been re-watching Lost. This is my all-time favorite series. I have every single um, DVD set, every season. Um, and every Christmas my mom would get me another season and I would rewatch from season one to the current season that she gave me. Now I have all of them and it's just, oh, I love it. And I'm introducing TJ to Lost and he really likes it. Um, so I really love this series. Those are all my January favorites. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit blase, um, only four makeup items so one was a flop. Um, but I have a feeling that next month I'll have a lot more because I've been, um, actively doing my makeup more. But, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe, um, uh, if you haven't already, and I'll see you on my next one. Bye!